All right, we'll take this opportunity to welcome you to the uh, post-fight press conference for Glory 35 Nice. What another great night in France and a spectacular night of uh, what Glory is all about. We uh, like to talk about the number of fights that end within the distance. Knockouts are, of course, part of the uh, plan in Glory kickboxing, and we had lots of that tonight, many of these fights ending uh, within the distance. Let's uh, introduce who's at our front table here uh, this evening. First of all, on my left, your right, Pavel Zuralev, who was a big winner tonight, speaking of fights that ended within the distance. He lost his glory debut, and he came out determined tonight to be different. I could tell when he stepped into the ring. Our head of talent operations, Mr. Cor Hemmers, is right next to him. And still, glory light heavyweight champion of the world, successful defense for Artem Vahitov tonight, who takes the belt home. Our chief executive officer, John Franklin, to his right. And I'm not the only one that walked out tonight saying this was an inspired performance by Benny Adagbui. Uh, really incredible, his uh, contender tournament win. He's now a two-time Glory Contender Tournament champion, by the way. And when I looked at the stats going into the finals, I think uh, Mladen had thrown 37 or 39 punches. You threw over 250 in that first fight, and everybody thought he was going to be the tired guy. Uh, we will open it up for uh, questions right after I get an opening statement from John Franklin here, our chief executive officer. If somebody wants to hand him that microphone right there. John, I know you said it before, but uh, France is one of our favorite uh, European countries. They are always good to us, and it's our first visit to Nice. Well, thank you, Tim. It's always a pleasure to come to France. Um, great fight community. I noticed everybody stayed right to the end. Uh, so it was an exciting, great um, night of action here in France. Uh, thank you to Nick Geis, our, our local promoter, for putting together such a, a great um, evening here in France. And um, thank you, of course, to the, to the fighters who put on the show. So thank you guys. What a great night of fights. And um, back to you, Tim. All right. Cor, do you have anything to say about the matchups tonight, the performances of the fighters? As I said, uh, we always talk about how many of our fights end inside the distance. We certainly had that tonight. Yes, yes. I think, uh, I, think uh, I saw some uh, amazing, great fights tonight. And uh, we keep our uh, ratio, what we always uh, announce. Uh, I, I have to count it, but maybe 50% uh, knockout ratio. But uh, still, it were equal fights in the start. You know, it were uh, some surprises. Yeah, I'm satisfied about uh, the performances uh, of the fighters tonight, so good evening. If there are any questions for anyone at the table, uh, we will take them now, and uh, we'll start right here in front with Mr. John O'Riggan. Thank you, Tim. Um, first question is for John or Cole. I'm not sure who's going to answer this, but um, you've got three very, very big performances tonight out of these three guys. Who gets the bonus awards? Oh, we still have to discuss that one, you know. Yeah, we got to have a little caucus here and uh, yeah, 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 check yeah. it out. It's yeah. going to be a tough decision, so yeah, yeah. coin always, flip, maybe. You could always yeah. get three bonus awards. <laughs> no, no, no. I think no, it comes uh, out of your budget, John. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to decide after this press conference, you know, because we will, we will need a small discussion, but I have something in my head, but I want to be uh, agreed together with John. Um, if I'll stick with you then, Court, if you could... Um, Maybe give me your thoughts on tonight and uh, whose performances really stood out for you and why. Well, I think uh, Benjamin did a great job. Uh, you know, he he had a tough fight in the in the first uh, semi final, so everybody thought you know this guy uh, must be tired a little bit, and uh, Brestovac uh, decided in the, in, the, in the within the distance. So the thing with uh, Breast of Us is uh, he can slow you down, you know, and uh, what uh, Benjamin didn't uh, trap in that, and he, uh, he, he kept the focus, and he did a great job. So I think a great performance from Benjamin. And, of course, uh, after an injury, our champion in the light heavyweight came back uh, very strong, and uh, he actually uh, boxed with a professional boxer and surprised him with a short jab. So also that. Then... I left, of course, uh, Pavel, who didn't, that, who didn't do that well in his uh, first uh, debut in glory in the, in the, in the contender, but he, uh, he took his uh, revenge tonight. Uh, very explosive, very impressive. So 
great fights of uh, those three guys. Thanks. I'm, uh, I'm going to go to the champion, Artem Bakitov. Congratulations. Um, you almost made, I don't want to say you almost made it look easy, but you kind of did. Um, what do you think was the secret tonight to, uh, to taking Zach apart so quickly? Все сами видели, то, что отрабатывали на тренировках, как говорил Зак, да, будет бомба и драма, вот она произошла, и я, в принципе, мы были уверены в победе, я был уверен в этом после первого раунда, знал, что победа будет за нами. Uh, like said before, the Zak, uh, it uh, was a bomb and drama for Yuli. Uh, we keep the belt and uh, we believe that we keep the belt before fight. And uh, you, everybody, saw who is really the champion now. And I know it's early because you've just won tonight's fight, but does, does anybody else stand out right now that might be an interesting fight or you think is a, a strong competitor? Я говорил уже, что мне без разницы, как решат организаторы, как подберут бойцов, мне без разницы, с кем боксировать. For now, it really doesn't matter with whom will be next fight. Uh, it depends on the, the organizers uh, who will be next. It doesn't matter. I never in my mind uh, who will be next. <laughs> Our team uh, said we'll the strongest guys. All right, Ethan, here in the front row, you have a question? Thanks, Tim. Uh, we've got these coming in from social media, from fans and some journalists who were watching the event uh, from around the world. Uh, the first one comes in from Michael Stetz at MMA Mania. Uh, question is for Artem. Um, it says that he, he asks, he says, Zach looked like he never fully recovered after the first knockdown. Um, what did you notice while you were in there in his eyes and body language that made you realize uh, it was time to finish him off? No, I in the first round, I realized that there were elements that отрабатывали удары и кики и отбивали ногу и после первого раунда я уже видел что растерянность у него в глазах ну и решил долго не не церемониться just uh, after the first round uh, I already uh, understood that uh, the Zach uh, can do nothing because uh, uh, all my things uh, what we prepare on the training uh, was a success successful, really successful. And uh, after that, I just doing my work. Uh, if you see all uh, my kicks, uh, be, success be successful, and for sure, for another my great job. Uh, all right. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, the next one is uh, from a fan on social media for Benjamin Adekuli. Uh, what went into your decision to train with Rico and Dennis Uh You know, uh, every time when you want to make a change, you have to choose the best. So I wanted to choose the best. I know Dennis is one of the best trainers in the world. Uh, we discussed. He accepted me. He had faith in me. He believed that uh, I'm, uh, after Rico, one of the toughest uh, fire in the world, so uh, we give it a chance, so yeah. I feel that I need a change back in the days because uh, uh, in December I lost to Rico and uh, after that my last two, three fights were good, I won, but not how I wanted to, so uh, every time, sometimes you need some changes, so I decided to make it now because uh, I still have a long career, I still have uh, goals, dreams, so uh, better now than later. Thank you. And a follow-up question. Um, 
are you going to wait? This actually comes from, again, Michael Stetz at MMA Mania. Are you going to wait until after Rico faces Ismail Lund, or do you want to stay busy? Uh, it's not my decision uh, when I'm going to fight and uh, who I'm going to fight, so maybe I'll have to fight somebody else next. But uh, first, Rico has his fight with Balhari, <coughs> and I hope he wins. Because uh, yeah, now I can say he's my uh, training partner. It's uh, Dennis Kidd, so uh, yeah. After that, we can see what uh, 2017 brings for us. So we are fighters, we are uh, fair play. Today we train together, tomorrow we fight. So this is life, this is our job. So we have to do professional. Great, thanks and congrats. Uh, one more question for Pavel. Um, this one is coming in from social media. Uh, it must have been disappointing to lose in your glory debut. Did that motivate you to get this win? And what's next? Who do you want to fight? Да, это было неудачно. Ну, предлагаю забыть о нем уже. Сегодня, я думаю, сегодня всем стало понятно, кто что может предложить в этой дивизионе. И поэтому, я думаю, все точки на две расставлены. Yes, it was not a good debut for me, but please forget about that. It was a good win. You saw what I did, what I can do. So let's see what will come. And do not ask me about the debut anymore. Fair enough. Thank you. All right. right. I might just follow up with uh, Benny for a second here and go back to the question of your new training because I think one of the criticisms of you in your fights with uh, Rico was in the later rounds you faded a little bit, especially in the championship rounds. What is it about training with Dennis that has increased your stamina? <laughs> Look, uh, uh, Lima from our team is uh, shh, don't say. No secrets, right? <laughs> Uh, it's uh, yeah, they have a secret. It's a way of uh, thinking. It's uh, all mental. So uh, uh, every uh, everyone gets tired, but you have to know how to control it. So uh, they 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 uh, they uh, they did uh, in put this into my mind that uh, I can go forward. I can go forward and train. So you saw after third round, I can also go for another third round. So. Great performance tonight. Thank you. Cor, I don't know if you want to chime in on this roadblock now that is building up in the heavyweight division, but it wasn't that long ago that the criticism of kickboxing was that there weren't enough good quality heavyweights in the world. We're proving that wrong now. But you, yes, have, yes, you have Ismail Lant, who's in line. Badr Hari, of course, has the next fight with Rico, which is not a championship. And now you've got Benny back in line. Yes, there's a whole row of uh, heavyweights waiting now uh, to challenge the champion, you know. And I uh, did an interview about this before, so I said, listen, uh, it's not true anymore. We have a lot of new uh, heavyweights coming up, uh, and uh, I think uh, it was uh, proven tonight that we have great fighters, you know. The winner uh, has a right to challenge the champion, but uh, don't underestimate the other three guys. They did a great performance, and they showed that we have a really strong heavyweight division again. So who will be next in line after Bader? Will it be Ismail? Yeah, Ismail Lund, of course. He is waiting. The fight with uh, Bader is an, a unique uh, uh, fight uh, in history of kickboxing. So we uh, had to talk with Ismail Lund because he wants uh, to fight Rico as soon as possible. Uh, so he will have the prior priority. He will fight Rico uh, after Bader. John, I guess this is a perfect segue into talking about what's now a month away. Uh, it seems like it's been several months down the road. We're now on top of it. Uh, Glory 36 in Oberhausen, Germany is on the way. Yeah, it'll be a little bit different program than we've done over the last couple of years. We're going to run the ESPN show first. Then we're going to jump into the Glory Super Fight Series on UFC Fight Pass. And then with our partner, UFC, the collision event will be uh, pay-per-view uh, just about everywhere in the world except for Holland because Ziggo Sport stepped up and decided they wanted to bring that to the, the people of Holland um, on a non-pay-per-view basis. But uh, everywhere else, um, we're partnering with the UFC on a digital pay-per-view around the world and um, in-demand direct and dish in the United States. So we've got the best partner in the world for a, a pay-per-view in UFC. It's the first time they've ever done this um, outside of their own group. So Glory with UFC is the first time for, for UFC. So we're, we're pretty excited about that. So we're all looking forward to December 10th 
biggest fight in the history of glory. And um, we look forward to welcoming you all to that fight. Cor, I think it's safe to say you've been in this business now for 40 years. You've dedicated your life to it. That uh, This is probably the biggest moment for kickboxing since the old Grand Prix days. Would you agree? Well, I've seen something in my life before, uh, Tim, so I'm, uh, but I'm, I'm happy with this card. And I think certainly, uh, I mean, we developed in those years that we established the brand, uh, a, a great new hero, Enrico Verhoeven. Uh, we have uh, Badahari, uh, he was a hero in the K1 days and he's still uh, a strong fighter in, uh, in, in, in the strongest period of his life as well. So I'm happy with this fight. Uh, um, yeah, I think, it, I think it's an historical fight from for the last, let me say, 20 years. I'm 40 years in the business, so I, s I saw some great fights before, so I'm uh, happy with uh, this fight uh, coming up now. Yeah. By the way, that's not the only fight on that card. Sidichai and uh, Gregorian, yeah, that course. should be a great matchup. I mean, we, 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 have, uh, we have actually three programs on that evening. We have the Glory Super Fight Series, and we have uh, the Glory Numbered, Glory uh, 36. And we have indeed uh, Sidichai fighting uh, and defending his title versus Marat Gregorian. And we have uh, Nicky Holske defending the title versus uh, Cedric Dumbe. And uh, if I uh, listen to Cedric, he has uh, all confidence uh, that he's going to beat Nicky. So that's interesting, you know. You've got the ladies, Cor. Oh, the ladies, yeah. How can I forget the ladies? I never forget the ladies in my life, but okay. Yeah, the ladies, uh, we saw tonight, uh, I think also a great performance from uh, Amal Debbie. Uh, 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 she's undefeated. But uh, I thought the Korean girl was uh, pretty tough for her. She did a very great job. And uh, okay, for France, I'm happy that uh, Amal Debbie uh, won, the, won, won the fight. And now we have uh, two uh, semifinals coming in the first part of uh, the show in, uh, in, in Germany. And uh, the winners will face each other in the collision part. So interesting, you know, we have the, the final of the Grand Prix uh, ladies tournament in our collision part as well. So this might be one of the first times we've actually made that public that they'll be fighting twice in one night. The semifinals of the Women's uh, Grand Prix Bantamweight Tournament and the finals will be happening in Oberhausen, Germany to wrap up a fantastic year for glory. And of course, 2017, John, bigger and better. Bigger, better, harder, faster, stronger. Um, 2017, we're adding a number of events. We're going to Asia. We're increasing events in Europe, we're going down to South America, and uh, hopefully going up to Canada as well. So uh, a lot of plans for 217. We're pretty excited about 217. So let us just say congratulations again, Pavel Zuralev, on your first glory win. Artem Vahitov, still glory light heavyweight champion, and our two-time glory contender tournament champion, Benjamin Adek Bui. On behalf of Glory Sports International, the entire team, Oberhausen, Germany, it's time for glory!